I want to reach the people that might not have a whole lot of hope and let them know that it can get better. I feel like always my music is not going to be for everybody, but I want it to be especially for the people that it is for. I want it to be like overly for them, you know what I mean? Like where they hear that they can't ignore it and be like, damn, like that speaks to me, you know? Yeah. So we got Fritzy, Black Santa. What up? What's going on? And your boy D-Easy. Yeah, we in Studio 1117. All right, Frissy. So where are you from? What are you repping? I am from Salina, Kansas. Born here, raised here a lot of my life. But when it comes down to it, I'm an artist out of Tulsa for the simple fact that my studio's in Tulsa, my people put me on shows, everything's all out of Tulsa, everything like that. When did you know that music was, was for you? I guess it came with the first song off my Fruition EP, Look Around. A good friend of mine, Anthony Zesma, um, you know, he was trying to get, get sober with me and things like that. And then, uh, you know, he had a relapse and, and there was fentanyl in it and he overdosed and died. So uh, I went home that night. I, well, I went to go be with his family that night and everything. And then the next day I'm like home by myself and it's really hitting me, bro. And uh, I just started writing, bro. And I wrote this song with no intention of anybody ever hearing it. It was an outlet that I needed. I pretty much knew when I put that first song out that uh, the feedback I was getting from it and the amount of shares that it got right away and things like that and the, the feedback I was getting from different states. Um, people like, yo, I heard your song. I had someone hit me up and say, I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm, in, uh, I'm in treatment right now. I just got out of detox and I heard your song and it made me cry. You know what I mean? And I was like, damn. And they were in like Montana or some shit. You know what I mean? You know, there's something to that. And then since then, I've just been trying to roll with putting me into my music. What motivates you then in music? At the very end of the day, I like to do it. So you can ask somebody who is a really good painter. They might not be making no money off their paintings. They might not be taking their paintings to a showcase for people to see them. They might, may not be doing none of that. But at the end of the day, when they go home, if they got a weekend off or something like that, they're sitting there at their house and they're painting. They still go and paint. So I've been doing that. <laughs> I bet at the end of the day, I'm a paint. All right, so um, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your backstory. <clears throat> We played sports, bro. That's what we did. We played a lot of sports. Uh, we did things like that. We was into the Yu-Gi-Oh cards and all that. Like, we, you know, doing all that stuff and everything like that. So we was just kids. And then, you know, I moved away. Uh, sixth grade. I started getting into, you know, smoking weed and drinking and things like that. So, uh, and I was like that black sheep type of kid, you know what I mean? Where nobody wanted to mess with me because cause I, I did bad things. And then uh, I started getting a little bit older. We start getting into like ninth grade, high school, and stuff like that, and that's when everybody's like, "Oh, we trying to party." I went those few years like being a an outcast and lonely and things like that, and and then it started getting to where uh, I was that like popular go to guy. I was popular with every group. We go out to this campsite one time, and we're all uh, drinking and everything, and and this girl just had had just got her license. Uh, she was a good friend of mine, and we went we went for a drive, and we were drunk, bro, and I, I wrecked the car. I wrecked the car bad, Shit. and she didn't have her seatbelt on, and she was ejected, and she died on impact. So I, do, I, I suffered some pretty bad injuries. I had a traumatic brain injury and things like that, and so I woke up in the hospital like a week later, and uh, I, don't, I didn't remember. I still don't remember, and they told me what happened. And when they told me what happened, it's like, couldn't accept it. I couldn't deal with it. You know what I mean? And then it kind of just got to the point where uh, I just wanted to escape. You know, I, I, when I turned 18, uh, my good friend that I had been staying with throughout high school, uh, you know, he had an overdose and died. And uh, I lost a lot of other friends all along the way where it was just like, I wanted to escape all the time. I didn't want to feel that. I didn't want to deal with it. You know what I mean? So I just got bad into the drugs and uh, started getting locked up a lot. And my mom said, you're getting in way too much trouble here. We got to send you back to Salina. So then I started messing with the speed and things like that. And when I started doing that, bro, I went off in that world for years, years, bro. Uh, and it just led to nothing. That's the stuff that really brought me to my knees, man. That's the stuff that really uh, took everything from me, bro. Like, I had nothing. Uh, so I finally got uh, PV a couple times. And then the last time I got caught... Uh, you know, they, they had me serve out my time. So when I served out my time and got out, it's the first time someone was waiting there and booking for me. My mom drove down from Oklahoma and she was like, I'm taking you back. She's like, <laughs> she's like, you finished out your time, this and that. She said, 
we're going back to Oklahoma. So uh, I, a friend of mine actually reached out to me from California, and, and they got me a flight, and I hopped on a flight and went out to California um, and just started to, you know, work in a recovery program and things like that. And that was uh, February 19th of 2017, so I'm going on, uh, you know, a couple years sober now and, and things like that, so... What are you trying to say with your music? Do you have a statement that you've been trying to get across lately? I want to give people hope, but also keep it real enough to let people know that life is life. Just because things get better doesn't mean shit don't happen. Yeah. And that you don't go through certain things. Just because my life is way better than it used to be doesn't mean that I don't still struggle. It doesn't mean that I don't still struggle with mental health. It doesn't mean that I don't struggle with, with things like that. Things like that. Things like that. Well, uh, that's my last question, so we can wrap it up with a freestyle. You got one on deck. You want a little freestyle, <laughs> a little acapella? Yeah, whatever you try to do. On beat, acapella, you know, we in the lab. I can find you a beat. <laughs> he said I DJ D, easy on the ones and twos, you heard me? Uh. <laughs> Yo, I was not expecting that. All right. Uh, if I let you in the room from all this pain in my eyes, I got the world on my shoulder, so much weight on my mind. I'm a veteran of hell, dog. In my head, like shell shock. Been around the block, never knocked up. Aiming for that top notch. This shit's still in my head.